Bonnie Liphart, and I have along with me today Arthur Henderson. I want you to tuck that name into your uh, memory someplace because I think you're going to hear it again. Now, how do you, if you have a child or a grandchild or a brother or sister or a little one, how do you create an environment to motivate them to be the best that they can be? To, uh, re to release that untapped potential, that sleeping giant within. I think that we have a person right here in this beautiful city here in the Tennessee Valley area that has done that. Arthur Henderson is, uh, a, I like to call him a scientist at uh, NASA's Marshall Space Center, Space Flight Center here in Huntsville. And I want you to hear how this came about and perhaps you can make it happen in your own family and we're going to tell you how. Arthur, welcome to Victory Network. Thank you, Bonnie. Glad to be here. Now, Arthur, how did you happen to be at Marshall, at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center? I would like for you to start back to when you were uh, in high school. Just going to start there and tell us about the progression of how it happened. Okay. Because you were a person that I understand that had something on the Challenger, on the Columbia, uh, that was actually done in space. Your very own idea of melting some metals in space, right? And how did that come about? Very true. It was a part of the uh, Project Explore program that was started by the AIAA and the Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville. Being a native Huntsvillian, I had the opportunity to uh, be a part of a high school that was very much concerned with uh, the students that were there and I had a counselor that uh, selected me out of a number of students uh, during my junior year to attend a minority engineering program. Uh, like many youngsters when you're you know in your sixth, seventh uh, age brackets you look at uh, becoming a policeman, a fireman, that kind of thing. So. I thought when I first started in high school that I'd become a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, and I vaguely considered engineering. But I went to this minority engineering program and learned about another program in the city of Huntsville, or I guess you'd call it an enterprise, and the name of that enterprise was the North Alabama Educational Opportunity Center. And that was the place that I learned about flying my very own experimental idea in space. Ooh, and and uh, this was during my senior year in high school, and the, uh, all, the, all the brochure talked about was all you have to do uh, to fly your very own experimental idea in space is to write a proposal, a one-page proposal, uh, and from what I understand, there were over 300 proposals that were submitted that year, back in 1978, and I was one of 13 students selected to fly my very own experimental idea in space, and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> Well, it may not be history to the people watching, <laughs> so let's go ahead and, and say hi. Because sure, I sure. really believe, Arthur, that you are a person that God has his hands on, and I want you to think about that heavily. And I really have a verse for you, and I want to share that with you, because as you go through life, I want you to refer back to this. It's Ephesians 1 and uh, 17 and 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, which I think he is, in Revelation, to reveal his, his uh, desire for your heart and for his will, in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, I know you play the organ at church, you sing in the choir, so you are a person that's committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so as that is your basis and your wonderful mother, who I tried to... Maybe one of these days we'll have her on. <laughs> See how she raised such a fine young man. She says, oh, no, he's the outgoing person. i got to stay at home in the background. <laughs> she wouldn't do that. That sounds but, like mom. <laughs> <laughs> so you got this opportunity, and you say the rest is history, but not quite. Tell me you went on to call, You got an opportunity to get not just a scholarship, but a scholarship plus a stipend. That's true. I, uh, it was all based on this experimental idea that was proposed uh, through the Space and Rocket Center, and there were four universities participating at the time, Alabama, University of Alabama in Huntsville, Auburn University, 
uh, the University of Alabama Tuscaloosa and Alabama A and M University. Yeah, Which one did you end up going to? And I attended Alabama A and M University. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one of the things that came out of uh, the uh, proposed idea was uh, this idea of melting metals in space and I received that idea through just reading the books in our high school library. Ran across this book called The Science of Cryogenics. I had no idea whatsoever what the science of cryogenics was all about until I read in more, in, in more depth. And uh, That's freezing. Yes, and, and I learned that that's the extremely cold temperatures mm -hmm. where you can freeze a rose so cold that it becomes brittle as glass but as strong as steel. Mm -hmm. Or you can freeze a goldfish uh, slowly and freeze him in the iceous phase, solid phase, and thaw that ice out and the fish would swim again. Mm -hmm. the science That's the, where they have the idea of people that are yeah, being doing frozen. people like uh -huh. that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, you know, I'm not very familiar with how to make this happen uh, in space, uh, even though I took the chemistry and physics courses. I never did link it to uh, the liquid nitrogen, hydrogen type of fluids. But I said, I can do the same thing with hotter temperatures and rather than having liquids, I can have liquids and solids reforming through a solidification process. And that's how I came up with the idea of melting metals in space, mm -hmm. which was a part of this getaway special package that's probably the most renowned getaway special that's ever flown. Uh, now, when you say getaway 300. special, why don't you explain that? Yes, the getaway special program is one of NASA's small self-contained payload programs, which is uh, an opportunity to allow students, uh, colleges and universities, and even private industry, uh, giving each of those entities an opportunity to fly their ideas in space at a very uh, economical price. Back in 1977, the price of flying something on the shuttle was something like $10,000. And considering a payload of that type, uh, that's very inexpensive to, uh, to do some type of uh, experimental ideas in space compared to the Hubble Space Telescope, which costs millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And would you almost go to the B? The B? <laughs> uh, well, one of the things that happens when you are diligent and you were a good student and you went on and you did those projects, because we want to mention that there's a project for helping Huntsville's children grab the future, and we'll talk about that. You are president of HATS, which sponsors TABS. TABS is, you see those billboards all over town. It just happened in May, I mm -hmm. believe, 15th, 16th. Right, right TABS 90. And that's, now HATS is Huntsville Associations of Technical Societies, which is like, I always think of, the first one that always comes to my mind is women engineers, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's, how many societies? We have, we have approximately 55 different organizations that's a part of HATS. And uh, those 55 organizations are engineering societies, like the Society for Women Engineers. Uh, we have the electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and we also have associate members, which are part of management associations and universities and even government agencies. Mm -hmm. Now, as the president of this HATS uh, group, because you are now a scientist at uh, NASA, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is other opportunities. You got to go, just came back from Washington, with the Chamber of Commerce, right. and tell me a little bit about that experience. It was excellent. I uh, always wondered what you know such groups do on uh, such an annual trip. So I had an opportunity through the Hats organization to represent Hats and Huntsville with this Chamber group uh, to meet some of the congressional reps and senators uh, from the state of Alabama as well as other states throughout the U.S. And uh, as you mentioned, it was an exciting time to to be there listening to those. Uh, representatives not only from our state but from the other states saying how Huntsville is very unique and that it's uh, beyond the leading edge of technology. It is uh, a city that you wouldn't even want to term as the Silicon Valley. It's uh, very unique uh, in its composition. You have four or five government agencies in the same place. It's really, of a, it's really more like a, uh, a secret of the nation, mm -hmm. Huntsville. It really is. However, I have never been anywhere in the world that they haven't heard of Huntsville, Alabama. You know, my daughter went over to Russia in September, and they're very familiar with Huntsville. Of course, the Russians were sending their <laughs> people over here to inspect and say, are we really dismantling all the yes. things we said we're supposed to? Yes. Well, uh, I think that you are a person that, as I feel that the Lord has his hands on you, and you're there, you do the, what would you say causes these things to happen in addition to his touch is 
you do the best job you can whatever you're given to do, don't you? Yes, I, uh, I have somewhat of a, of a formula that's uh, made up of five parts. Uh, the first part of the formula is to set a goal. Everybody needs to have a dream and aspiration or aspiration. And uh, you can't accomplish anything or get anywhere unless you know where you're going. So you have to set a goal. The second part of the formula is to have a positive mental attitude about yourself and others. Uh, the, your attitude is probably the most important thing in your life. And if you want to have friends and want to be loving and that type of person, uh, you have to have a, a positive mental attitude about life. The third part is uh, good work habits. Uh, you have to work smart. And in order to accomplish certain things, uh, you must have this as a part of the formula. The fourth item being a burning desire, having this, this desire to uh, accomplish your goal and maintain that positive attitude in addition to encompassing the good work habits or the working smart aspect. And then last but not least is having a faith and belief in God because uh, without God certainly we can't uh, achieve and uh, accept the, the credit for the things you may accomplish through the years. Well you said several things that uh, this of course the objective well, well why are we here on earth? Each person has to search out that and uh, after you've identified that and then going forward being persistent committed to Absolutely. what you do as unto the Lord the Bible says whatever your hands find to do well uh, you got to m mingle with what I call the big wigs the senator who some Absolutely. of the senators and the mayor Senator and Heflin was there and Senator Shelby from the state of Alabama we had uh, Senator uh, Warner uh, I can't remember exactly what state he was from, but uh, we had a chance to interact and ask questions with those different people. And, uh, you know, they had positive things to say about, you know, Huntsville and the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. So if you are diligent in your, uh, your homework and you're going on as opportunities come, then this could happen to other people. Now, let's min talk about uh, the Hands-On Science Center that is one of the goals and yes the okay. hats projects tell us a little bit about that i see there are children here that are working on science projects tell us about this okay uh this idea came from about four or five uh ladies actually uh that decided to formulate a committee to build a hands-on science museum for children here in the area and it's been in process for about uh, a year a year and a half now and it's an $8 million project that they uh, felt, that felt very positive about doing for the, the young people here in this area. Because a city like Huntsville, being high tech, it certainly needs to have something for everybody. Uh, you know, the engineers and scientists are doing their thing at work, and the teachers and so forth are doing their thing in trying to get this across and stimulate that interest in the youth. And one way to stimulate the interest is to allow them to put their hands on things, rather than just learning from lectures and from lesson plans and that kind of thing, homework, uh, actually give them something that they can put in hand and say, hey, this is how this works. This is how this uh, uh, assembles into this piece. And that's what we hope to accomplish with this, this science center objective. Well, in the brochure about it, and by the way, anyone that would like to have a brochure, you can get, it, uh, get a brochure by contacting the HATS organization which through the Chamber of Commerce, I know that they can get that information of how to get in touch with you. Absolutely. As a post office box 1964, but in case you don't remember that, then you can contact the... Uh, the, the Huntsville the, Madison County Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Uh -huh. And just, just mention hats. And, mm, that, and what's that, that science project for the children? That's what you might call it if you can't remember Hands-On Science Center. Uh, I know I have a five-year-old grandson, and at that age, they are so curious. They want to do everything. Well, by the time they're in junior high school, they've been told, don't bite off more you, than you can chew. Don't go where you're not wanted. Don't uh, go near the water. Don't ride the bicycle till you learn to ride, chill, whatever. <laughs> don't true. go swim. Don't get in the water till you learn to swim. All these conditionings. Don't, 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 don't. Mm -hmm. Until, uh, don't talk to strangers. You know, we're just told so many times of don't do something. So by the time you get in a senior in high school, usually you just say, well, what's the use trying? That's true. So what this will do, according to the brochure and what I can see, is mm -hmm. it will put that, that curiosity yes. alive again. Yes. Where they can actually get in there and try mm -hmm. things that haven't been tried. And hopefully eliminate the fear. You know, a lot of people are afraid to uh, 
focusing on you know the the sciences or engineering disciplines, oh. especially mathematics. Once you oh. mention mathematics, they just freak out. For That's some right. Reason. And, it's and not to all say that scientist, you think you have these ideas. Every scientist has to have this weird hair, you know, around here, bald mm -hmm. head, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, everybody's heard the scientist jokes where the scientist, I think his name is Arthur Henderson, he went <laughs> <laughs> to eat in the cafeteria there at NASA and then came back, uh, he gave, came up to, had his tray full, was ready to pay, and the person said, oh, Dr. So-and-so, you're back again to eat. And he said, have I already eaten today? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, Absolutely. That's supposed to be a Absolutely. joke. But, you know, they're so focused on what they want to accomplish. That's true. Do you get that focused on some things that well, you work on? Uh, I guess I, I have a one-track mind. Once I focus on a certain thing, I normally stick with it until I'm done. But one of the things that I've learned, you know, not only through uh, my education, but through interacting with people in general, uh, you have to uh, involve yourself, you know, if you're an engineer, you know, be involved in music uh, as a little side hobby. Or Which being, you are with yes. the choir and with the playing the organ at yes, the church. Yes, uh, the I started my music career back in uh, middle school as a trombonist. Mm -hmm. And I played trombone through uh, the sixth grade through the twelfth. Mm -hmm. And I just elected to put that instrument on the shelf. And uh, during those years, I did learn how to uh, play the keyboard. So. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, I'm most noted for with the keyboard is that uh, my bass clef skills are uh, very innovative in that, you know, it's not a typical type of uh, We're going to have one out here one of these days to find out. We, we took him over that clavin oven and he looked at that and said, one keyboard? I'm used to three with feet and all this. So right, said, right. Okay, we'll get one more complex the next yes, time. Yes. I thought we were going to get to hear some praise of <laughs> next yeah, time. maybe next time. But, but the, you're innovating with your bass court now. Yes, uh, you know I participated in a number of competitions, not only while I was in the band, but you know during various organ competitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one thing that the judges uh, pointed out mm -hmm. is that you know your your pedal work is is unique. I'm glad you're focused because uh, there's a gnat, <laughs> there's a couple of flying uh, discs around <laughs> us that are wanting to attack us. But anyway. Uh, so, do you find that, that you are that kind of person, a competitive type of person, no matter what your project is, that you'd like to win, you'd like to do the best you can? Absolutely. Uh, you know, opportunities only come around every so often. And if you're not ready to seize them or if you're not prepared when they come around, then you lose out. Mm -hmm. And I certainly don't want to be lost in the shuffle. I, I heard that you got invited to be considered as the executive assistant to the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Is that a true rumor? Yes, uh, that call did come through uh, about a week or two ago, and uh, certainly uh, I would love that opportunity if it, mm -hmm. if it comes about. What's interesting is so many times people will get an, a call to do something really, you know, this to me would be incredible. You'd just be right there, right hand mm -hmm. person. But they'll say, well, I got to pray about it. But I like what you said. You got to be ready t to seize the opportunity, and I call that being prayed up. If you're ready, if you if you know what your direction is, mm -hmm. then when you get the op, when the door opens, you're ready to walk through. You don't have to wonder, well, should I do this or shouldn't I do this? You just, Absolutely. you know. That's, true. That's the part about the goals, the objectives, the reason for being, mm -hmm. that you... Uh, the preparation, Yeah, the, the preparation, habits. the work habits. And, and you know, the desire. And the, the desire. desire. you got to mm -hmm. have that desire. Mm -hmm. But you got to have the preparation mm -hmm. uh, and in addition to the desire. Very That's important. A, and that means... That probably when they were watching you, you might have done, been doing some insignificant to you insignificant part mm -hmm. of your job, and they were watching you. Could have been on that trip to Washington. That's true. You never know, and they probably said, "Well, this guy doesn't drink too much. He doesn't do, you know, whatever." <laughs> right. <laughs> and, yeah, people do watch, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to be mindful of that as well. So. Now, uh, uh, as Hats has sponsored the tabs, which everybody sees those big. Uh, billboards around tabs 90 for instance and it's a it's an annual event uh -huh. also well here uh, tell me a little bit about tabs and what okay. exactly I can I've got the booklet here but it, <laughs> I mean, don't yes, have time tabs to is things. an annual event that hat sponsors and it stands for the technical and business exhibition symposium and what it's all about is bridging the gap between the technical and business communities because you know you have the engineers working over here and scientists working on this side on the other hand you have the 
the business people trying to sell the products or the services that they have to offer, and the two very seldom uh, meet at some happy medium. That's the whole purpose of TABS is to get those two to come together and talk about the things that they do and see how they correlate with one another. In addition to that, uh, inviting the general public to see what's going on uh, with the engineers and scientists along with the business people and the services that are being provided to the community uh, to see how their tax monies are being used and not wasted, how uh, they can interact with these people and not be afraid because, I mean, they're just ordinary people just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. The scientists, there's an ordinary people. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> now I'm married to an engineer for 30 years, so I, I know he's mm, he's pretty focused. You know, he can, gets his mind on something, and he can he can almost carry on a conversation with you, not remember a word of it if his <laughs> mind is on inventing something or getting yes. a patent or something. Yes. But now in this tabs, you have people from all over the world that come there. Yes, in TABS is becoming more and more international, and the TABS 91 that we're already working on, uh, the theme for next year is positioning for the future. You know, mm -hmm. with the world changing like it is, mm -hmm. uh, positioning for the future is very important. Absolutely. And, and Huntsville will have a key role to play in all that. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you were going to encourage, uh, l let's say, possibly someone is home, uh, out of school, and certainly the mothers are. If uh, well, some this program is also shown at five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, so they can see it at that time. Mm -hmm. But they're thinking, yeah, I think I might like to work with NASA, or maybe even be an astronaut, or be a scientist for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, how would they get started? What would you recommend to a young person to um, to allow that sleeping giant within, that untapped potential, to start showing forth? Well, I guess the first thing would be to answer a few questions like, uh, you know, what are your interests? Do you enjoy uh, fooling with things? Do you enjoy working with people? Are you a, uh, a thing person or a people person? Um, what exactly uh, do you think would turn you on in regards to a career? Uh, after determining the answers to that question, those questions, I would, uh, you know, throw out, how would you like to be an astronaut? How would you like to do things that have never been done before? How would you like to fly on an aircraft that flies at 26 times the speed of sound? Would you like to go to Mars one day? Mm -hmm. and yeah, because that's already been planned, uh, planned now, yes, is going yes. to Mars, putting man on Mars. That's right. Not just on the moon, but on Mars. That's right. And uh, then, of course, the Hubble telescope, they, they've said, is even more incredible than what they anticipated. So right. somebody working on that. And that's somebody's idea. Somebody that's true. said... In the beginning, just like this, uh, the hands-on science center mm -hmm. is just a person gets that in their head and they think, we, our kids need to be challenged to uh, be curious, to right. not have that curiosity squelched and put That's down. Right. So because if you look at the engineers that you know have worked with NASA or the Army or any uh, industrial company, they, they sit down and try to think up various ideas to implement. And many times or oftentimes they... Uh, take weeks and weeks upon weeks and still uh, fail to come up with anything. And then you can meet some youngster on the street and he'll have an idea and, ah, oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'll always remember how the color um, tube was developed, the very first one for RCA. Uh, they were trying to go from black and white to color television. They mm -hmm. knew it could be done. And a woman in Marietta, Pennsylvania, uh, she worked on the line in the RCA plant, and all the engineers had, to have, for weeks, said, but in order to do this, we've got to have this many, oh, you know, holes in this piece of metal, and they said, it can't be done, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So she, when they describe her, they say, well, she didn't have any front teeth, and she wore jeans and too tight t-shirts in the days when doesn't a lot of women wear jeans and tight mm -hmm. t-shirts and she's a little overweight, but she said, why don't we put acid on it? Because she worked out in the plant, and she mm. knew what acid would do to metal, mm -hmm. and they tried it, and it worked, and then she got five or six. No, they told her, okay, it's a great <laughs> idea. We're going to use it. You may have any car that you would like. Mm -hmm. That was going to be her, her gift, you know, her uh, award for that. Mm -hmm. So she took a Chevy something. She could have, they said any car. It could have been a Mercedes. It could have mm -hmm. been, you know. 
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but to her to have that new, but my point really is that somebody that's not technically oriented sometimes can come up with an idea because they're, they're not trained that it can't be done. Sure, sure. So a youngster could have an idea that negative G's, didn't you say that is something that needs to be developed? Absolutely. Uh, when you look at uh, what we're looking at at the moment, the gravitational uh, accelerations and the things that we're used to in physics, uh, just, think, just think if you can eliminate that variable, if there is no gravity, mm -hmm. per se. And then if there is no gravity, we know we can obtain close to zero G mm -hmm. by going out into space. But if you can create a deceleration in the negative direction, coming mm -hmm. up with a minus 1G and a minus 2G, just think what the effects would be then. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's uh, not accomplishable at the moment. That you're aware of. That I know a person in Texas who's working on a whirly go, which is, a, I was at the uh, Inventors Conference last year in Washington, mm -hmm. and they have an idea of one, of how to make one. Mm. And you might, in fact, like to get in touch with sure. them. Uh, there was one other thing you said needed to be invented in, in addition, and developed in addition to the negative Gs. I don't know if you can Well, uh, you know, like the microwaves today, uh, yeah. kind of like the idea that I had, you know, 10 years ago while I was in high school. Uh, you know, we know how to heat things fast, but we don't know how to cool things off fast. Once we, they're if, heated. Yeah. If we can come up with another uh, consumable type of, uh, a consumer type of device that will freeze things instantly, I think it would be a big... Better than cryogenic. Yeah. Different from that. Yeah, different commercial. from cryogenics, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. In a commercial application. Okay, kids, that's your possibility that you're going to get to do. And as a, a member of this, uh, finding out more about Hands-On Science Center, your grandfather has a couple million. Would you please tell him that we need it for this? It uh, wouldn't hurt if uh, we even had $600 of that to go here to Victory Network. Who knows, by the end <laughs> of the month. Uh, well, it's great to find a scientist that's also a people person. You realize you got both of those? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a neat, <laughs> neat thing to have. Okay, very good to have with us today Arthur Henderson. And you just might like to have him come and tell your group more about what he does. Uh, I don't know if he wanted me to say that or not. Probably say, <laughs> You're I, more than happy to do okay, that. Okay, very good. He is the president of TABS, a scientist at the NASA uh, Marshall Space. Uh, at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, and uh, his mama's one of his mama's favorite sons, got a brother, so we can't say the favorite son, <laughs> and possibly going to be even uh, the executive assistant to the director. We never know. Possibly will be. And other things. You remember that name, Arthur Henderson. And bless you. I know the Lord has his hands on you, and you're going to, you have the wisdom and understanding and knowledge, and you just keep giving God the glory, and it'll be there always for you. Thank you. Arthur Henderson. I'm Bonnie Libhart. Bless your heart for watching.